Hello everyone. This video is going to be about gradient fills. Gradient fills are a new feature that's been added in 2.1, a version of embroidery wear. And basically what it allows you to do is to vary the spacing of the fills. Right now we have a uniform fill of uh, two tenths of a millimeter spacing. And if we want to change that, we could change it to a gradient. And so basically under the fill category, we have a new a category called gradient file name. If you open for the gradient file name, you'll have these different choices. So basically they're textually described what they do. So in the case of uh, the simplest one, we'll just do a linear up, which will basically go from small to large like that. And you can see that basically on this side, it's got smaller spacing. And on that side, it's wider spacing. It gives you a shading effect. Now, if we have a second image, you notice that we have kind of a blending effect. Although this one is solid again, we can go and we can choose a gradient fill linear down instead. And it'll shade the other way, although I had one selected, so let me do that over again. We'll do the linear up one for the blue. And then we do linear down for the red. And you can see that its gradient goes down in blue and up in red, and you end up getting a blend effect from blue to red, which could be kind of neat. Now, we also have the ability to do um, really neat shading. So if I just look at the blue for now, we have other gradient file names here that I call sawtooth, which basically goes up and down, goes up and down, like a sawtooth shape. And there's five different types here. There's four teeth, two teeth, etc. Three teeth. Uh, we have gradients that go up parabolically, up and down, up and down, which gives you a center uh, gradient, or you can do the opposite way, down, up, down, up, which gradients on the ends. And then we have uh, gradients parabolic. Well, actually, we don't have parabolic ones. Anyway, um, then we also have the ability to do three gradients on the whole thing. So we can have three different gradients on the whole thing. So we can have a gradient that's just the first half of the object. So we choose gradient first half and it only goes up the first half of the object. Then we have the gradient second half which is the red and then we have the gradient middle which just goes over the middle. So I'm choosing the wrong thing here. Gradient over the middle half. And that's just in the middle. So when you look at this one, um, you'll see that each of these we can look at individually. We have blue on the first half, the red on the second half, and then the gold in the middle. So when you have those all on, you get a three color blend. So here we have a fill with a gradient. What's interesting about fills is that because we can do the first half, the second half, or the middle, you'll notice that when we do the fill, um, so basically, each of those was a separate object that had gradients going in different ways. So I have two objects here, um, basically the same shape. One has a blue gradient, one has a red gradient, and they go opposite directions. So when you actually do the fills, you're going to have to section order them separately, uh, potentially because they both have, they're essentially two objects, so they have two different directions. Now, you notice in here, I have section one. and it goes to the end of here, but the start of the section 
zero is over here. Now, I actually had to add a path along what's called an edge walk. So instead of going straight through the object to the starting position, you have to go along the edge. Otherwise, you'll see it through the gradient. So this, may, this is a unique problem for gradients, is that you have to find a way to get to your start paths uh, by doing certain edge walks. Or, in the case of this one, we're doing a walk over a previous line to the start line here. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to delete the two lines here, and you can see that they cross. So in order to get to this start position for this one, we're going to have to walk along the edge. So we walk along the edge of the object, like so. And then you can see that we don't see that line anymore. In the same case for this one, this is a special case, um, we're going to probably go up here, or we could go up here, over here, either one. Um, we're going to go and walk along the object. So that you don't see that line. So let me show you the blue one, because the blue one is a little different, potentially, because of the way the gradients lay, it might end up being a little different. So in this case, the start point is here, so we just edge walk down this edge. Or we actually didn't even have to walk down this edge because it already went there. And then in the second one, from the end here, it's much like the other one where we had to walk over to there. So if I delete that, you'll see that it's a slight line. You probably wouldn't notice that because the spacing is pretty close here. It really is important when the spacing is big because you'll see all sorts of things. And that wasn't big enough for me to zoomed up enough for me to do it properly. So let's delete that, add it again. I'm not doing a very good job at this. <laughs> All right, but anyway, you get the idea.